Das is Zeit für Deutsch. Hello, Dutchies, and welcome back to another episode of your PA Dutch Minute. This is the third and probably final video in a short series I've been doing on Pennsylvania Dutch trivia facts. I did an episode that looked at some trivia facts from the 1700s, and then I did an episode that looked at facts from the 1800s, and now I close this mini-series out with some facts covering the 1900s. If you didn't see the 17 or 1800s videos, they are, of course, on the YouTube channel. You can go back and watch them at any point, where all of our content is stored, of course, not just those videos. So feel free to check those out if you haven't already seen them. But today we're dealing with the 1900s, so let's jump into it. I picked five things, no, four things, five things, I don't remember, four or five things. Um, of course, there's plenty of other things, but these are the ones I thought, yeah, let's go with these because I think there's there's one or two in here that maybe a lot of people aren't aware of, uh, and then there's some that I think most people are aware of, so it's a nice mix, I think. Again, you're at a dinner party or you're somewhere and there's an opportunity for you to throw some useful trivia uh, at people and you want to do it PA Dutch style, here you go. All right, so the first trivia fact for the 1900s is that I'm going to share with you in the 1900s, that century, saw two presidents serve in the White House with Pennsylvania Dutch ancestry, and that was Herbert Hoover and Dwight Eisenhower. And of course, they both served in the first half of the 1900s. Well, Ike was throughout the 50s, so, you know, but definitely in the in the earlier part of the 1900s as opposed to the, the second half. Both of them, if you look at their family trees, can trace uh, lineage and uh, uh, great-grandparents, et cetera, back to Pennsylvania Dutch stock in southeastern Pennsylvania. Uh, the Eisenhower family lived in Pennsylvania for quite a while before they moved out to the Midwest, where, where Dwight would eventually be born, but they were Pennsylvania Dutch through and through. Hoover family as well, kind of a similar story. Their, their roots are in southeastern Pennsylvania, but it's at one point the family moved out to the Midwest and same story as the Eisenhowers. So there were two. Um, there were no pencil, not as far as I know, none of the pens, none of the presidents that served after Eisenhower. We can, I could find anything that tied them to Pennsylvania Dutch. But in the 2000s, as a quick little note, since I'm not going to be doing a video about the 2000s, is Barack Obama, uh, president in from 2008 till 2016. He had Pennsylvania Dutch uh, roots. I don't know. That's it was in my video on presidents that have Pennsylvania Dutch ancestry. His uh, he had great grandparents that uh, were uh, Pennsylvania Dutch. So there you go. But for the 1900s, we got Hoover and Eisenhower. Fact number two: In the summer of 1950, we saw three giants of Pennsylvania Dutch studies come together: Alfred Shoemaker, Will, J. William Fry, and Don Yoder. They were all. Uh, uh, professors in higher ed at university collegiate level that were doing things in Pennsylvania Dutch. Uh, Fry, of course, famously wrote a grammar book on the Pennsylvania Dutch. Shoemaker collected stories, and Don Yoder did. Uh, I can't begin to list the things that Don Yoder did in regards to Pennsylvania Dutch studies, but these three gentlemen came together in the summer of 1950 and decided that they wanted to create a new festival to highlight the Pennsylvania Dutch culture, and that became known as today as the Kutztown Folk Festival. Um, it is still going on, of course. This year, it will celebrate its 74th birthday anniversary. And what's really important about this is, yes, it tells our story, but the Kutztown Folk Festival and the work of these three gentlemen created the very first folk life festival in the United States of America. And what that means is it was a festival dedicated to showing off a culture and teaching about a culture with actual artisans, craftsmen doing the work and showing the tourists or the people who would come to the festival how our culture does what they do. Uh, and if you go to the Kutztown Folk Festival today, that tradition is still being carried on. You can see people making uh, candles, uh, tinsmiths, uh, how to how we traditionally threshed uh, grain, um, quilting, of course, our foodways. So it is uh, one of the, it is the oldest folk life festival in the United States and one of the largest too. And year after year gets ranked as one of the best festivals, you know, always in the top 10 festivals that you can go to in the entire United States of America. So we got to give a shout out to Mr. Shoemaker, Mr. Fry, and Mr. Yoder for their vision and their forward thinkingness to create this festival that still lives on today. Fact number three, Sebastian S. Kresge, born in Allentown, Pennsylvania in 1867 from good Pennsylvania Dutch stock, would go on to create two companies at the time they were both um, department stores. 
SS Kresge Company and the Kresge Newark department stores. But eventually they would merge into what we know as Kmart. Now, Kmart is no longer around. I don't think it's around anymore. Of course, Walmart dominated when it came onto the scene. But I can remember as a child and throughout the 80s and 90s, of course, that Kmart was a staple as a as a discount uh, department store. You know, you could go to Macy's and you could get high end stuff, but then you can go to Kmart and get stuff that you needed for a lot less price. It wasn't a Macy's and they never advertised themselves as a Macy's. Right. But I mean, maybe some of you have fond memories of Kmart. It's where you could get clothes, but you could also get your, your pictures developed. You could also get your pharmacy goods. And then you could also get a bite to eat in their small cafe. Cause most of the Kmart's at least that I went to growing up had some kind of like little cafe in there as well. So, uh, Pennsylvania Dutch company, uh, founded by a good Pennsylvania Dutchman S S Kresge, Sebastian S. Kresge. Did you know that fact? Did you? Did you? Here's our next one. And this is one I think a lot of people probably aren't aware of. Another famous Pennsylvania Dutch boy that went on to do something amazing. Bert D. Weber Jr., who was born in Anvil, Pennsylvania in 1942, who would eventually graduate from Conrad Weiser High School in Western Berks County, would go on to become a very famous treasure hunter. And he really would become famous because in November of 1978, he and his crew would discover the wreck of the Spanish galleon, the Concepcion. The Concepcion uh, was loaded with silver, uh, and the estimate of the worth of the treasure that he discovered is well over a hundred million dollars. Tons of Spanish silver coins, uh, other gold jewelry. The boat was loaded and he discovered it. What a great, awesome story. So Pennsylvania Dutch, how about that? How about that, Bert D. Weber Jr.? A good Berks County boy, but also a good Pennsylvania Dutch boy, making it big on the world stage by discovering that amazing sunken sea treasure. And my last fact for all of you, and I think a lot of you probably know this, but if you didn't, in 1976, the, Gen the Pennsylvania General Assembly in Harrisburg officially named June 28th as Pennsylvania German Day in recognition of the cultural, educational, and historical contributions from our heritage to this Commonwealth. And it's celebrated every year on June 28th. Maybe you didn't know that. Now you know. We do have our own day recognized by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, June 28th. It's Pennsylvania Dutch Day, Pennsylvania German Day. It's a day where we can proudly, you know, puff out our chests a little bit and say, our culture has done some great things for the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and for America, toward into American history as well. It's not just Pennsylvania. We've spread and have done great things. We as a people, as a culture, as a history, all those things. So there are my facts, my trivia facts for you for the 1900s. Uh, I just don't think we have enough years in the year 2000 yet to do, <laughs> to do a video on Pennsylvania Dutch trivia facts of the 2000s. If you think I'm wrong, send me some ideas and I'll put one together. Gladly do that. In fact, I'd welcome to see what you guys think about that. Actually, let me know. If you'd like to get some of your own Pennsylvania Dutch merch, maybe you'd like to, you know, spring and summer is right around the corner. You want to get out there and start wearing a, your your T-shirts and things like that. Check out our Zazzle shop, zazzle.com backslash PA Dutch stuff. Uh, tons of different designs that Rachel Yoder and myself have put together. You can get all of our stuff on that website, either in the form of a T-shirt or a magnet or a sticker or an apron or a sweatshirt. The, 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 num the, the possibilities are endless. Please check that website out. If you see a design that you like, you can get a belt. Schnickel t-shirt. You can get an Elvidrich t-shirt. We have a t-shirt with red bead eggs on it. Where else are you going to get that, people? Where else are you going to get that? So please check out our shop to get your own PA Dutch merch. Or maybe you have someone in your family that birthday is coming up or something like that. Perfect opportunity for you to check out our stuff and hopefully purchase something. If you like what we're doing here at the channel and you'd like to financially support us, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com backslash Doug Mainford. All money raised in the Buy Me a Coffee campaign. Each coffee costs five bucks. You could buy me one. You could buy me 50. But you don't have to buy me any either. If you just like the content and you don't feel comfortable giving, you know, buying me any coffee, that's perfectly fine too. We're going to keep the Pennsylvania Dutch content coming. But if you do feel like you'd like to support me, I appreciate it, and all the money raised through Buy Me A Coffee goes to the upkeep of the channel, new cameras, new tech, pay for some of the uh, bills and things like that. Um, it's not buying me a new Porsche or a new Mercedes or anything like that. Nobody's bought me that much coffee yet, so <laughs> no worries about that. I'm so glad that you decide to uh, keep supporting us by watching our videos, and I'm going to keep the good, high-quality content coming. But we're not just on YouTube. Don't forget, you can check out our content at other places, too. Have you ever visited our website, padutch101.com? That is a central location where you can go to get access to many different things Pennsylvania Dutch related, links to other helpful websites, um, links to all of the playlists on my YouTube channel, um, 
lots of other stuff too. So check out the website. My week, my monthly blog is there. I do a, a bilingual monthly blog, both in English and in Pennsylvania Dutch. Um, it's a, it's a one-stop shop. So check out padutch101.com. And if you are on social media, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, what used to be Twitter. Just look for at padutch101, uh, where all of our content is also proudly on display and where I can interact with all of you uh, on a on a one-on-one -on -one basis on any of those platforms. So if you're out there, Look us up, give us a like, or give us a follow. If you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, please do. Tell your friends about the good things we're doing here at PA Dutch 101. We're going to keep that high-quality pencil faunish diage content coming at you throughout the year and into the future, of course. Till next time, dear friends, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch. Spread these trivia facts around with your friends. They're like manure. They only work when you spread them around, okay? Till next time, dear friends, keep practicing your Pennsylvania Dutch. I already said that, but I'm going to say it again. And mox good. Monk's cute, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And schlock that notification bell.